In our previous tutorials, we've been going over different tips and tricks to get you started to making your RPG Maker MZ game. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making the opening cutscene for your game. And if you love RPG Maker tips, tricks, tutorials, and just general discussion about RPG Maker, then scroll down and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. First, what we're going to need to do is jump over into Audacity. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to have some audio in our game to tell the story. So all you need to do is come up with a good little hook for your game, and then hit record. Three years have passed since the Calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come together in their final respite, Haven Island, the last surviving place on Gaia. Most people are happy with this and strive for a better tomorrow, but some people just want to watch the world burn. After we've recorded our little intro, we'll listen to it. Alright, so we catch the drift. What we're going to do is go into tracks up here, go add new, stereo track, and we're going to copy this and paste it down here. And then all we're going to do is offset it by the slightest amount. Now that's good, but let's add some pitch change in there. So we're going to highlight all of this, going to effect, we're going to change pitch, and right here we're just going to raise the pitch by 10%. Now what we're going to do is this one at the top, we're going to pull that all the way over to the right, and this one over to the left. Three years have passed since the Calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come together. In their and now you can hear, in both ears, two different people speaking. We're going to do this one more time, we're going to create a new track, and hit paste. Three years have passed since the Calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come to that sounds epic. Alright, so now what we want to do is go File, Export, OGG. And then we're going to save it to some location. Where you want to save it to is your game folder. So we're going to find that. And in your game folder you just want to click on Audio. And we're just going to save this as a BGM. And we'll just save that as Intro Voice. And now that's done. If we go over into our game, we should be able to see under our audio manager. There it is, intro voice. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is how long it is. So this is 20 seconds. Now every one second, 60 frames plays. Just keep that in mind. Firstly, what we're going to do is create a brand new map and we'll make this the opening cutscene. You don't need to worry about any of the settings right now, just hit OK. And then right in the middle, under your Events tab, just go right click, Quick Event, Starting Player, right here. Now, as you can see, if we were to start the game right now, her little graphic shows up in the middle of the screen. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is go into the Database Manager. We're going to create a new character. As you can see, I've already created a different character for this cutscene. We're going to create a new character, which is blank and empty. And we're just going to call this Intro. Hit Apply. And then over in the Systems tab, where it shows your starting party, we're going to delete Ashula, or whoever you have as the starting person. We're going to replace it with Intro. Hit OK. Hit Apply. Now you'll see this starting event has no graphic. And if we load up the game, there's no graphic there. Now we can move on to the cutscene. So what we're going to do is right in the top left corner is where I like to put my cutscenes. What we're going to do for the trigger, instead of action button, we're going to make that auto run. Now we're going to double click over here, click over to the second tab in the event commands and hit play BGM. We're going to find our intro and hit OK. Now this is where the important part is. We're going to double click here and on the second page again we're going to wait. Now it's going to ask how many frames we want to wait for. One second for 60 frames. So we saw over here that our thing was 20 seconds long. So we'll just open the calculator. We're going to go 20 times 60. And that's 1200. So what we want to do over in the engine is where it says duration frames, we want 1200. Now it only goes up to 9999. So we're going to click 9999. We're going to wait for completion. We're going to make another wait command, and we're just going to make that 201. And altogether, that should add up to 1200 frames. After this, 
we're going to go back into the event commands, fade out BGM, and over a duration of one second. What that's going to do is it's going to play the intro, wait, and then it's going to stop the intro so it doesn't repeat the voice over and over again. After that, we're going to double click again and hit fade out screen. Then we're going to change the actors around. So come over here to the first page, and then it says change party member. We're going to remove intro, and we're going to add Ashula. And if it's the first time, always hit initialize. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add party member Magus. Then what we're going to do is on the second page of the event commands, we're going to transfer the player from opening cutscene to another map. I've prepared this one earlier. So just make a map and transfer your player there. And they're going to be facing left. Then what you want to do after that is fade the screen in. So now if we click play on this, Three years have passed since the Calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come together in their final respite, Haven Island, the last surviving place on Gaia. Most people are happy with this and strive for a better tomorrow, but some people just want to watch the world burn. And then it transfers us over here. Now nothing's happening yet because we haven't designated anything to happen, so after that text you're able to run around. But that's not really good enough for me, so what I'm going to do is go over to this map here and we transferred her here so this is going to be the cutscene and we're just going to create another image here which has our second character on it and that's Magus. It's really important that you name your different events so you're able to identify them when you're making them move, when you're showing animations above them, etc. So now what we're going to do, considering this is where the player gets transferred to, we're going to double click on this event and then again, in the bottom corner, we're going to change the trigger to auto run. And we're just going to have some text. So we'll just have Magus saying, we're almost there, just a little further. And down here, we can just name him Magus. Underneath that, we'll have Ashula responding. We've been walking for hours. I just want to kill some monsters. Now, in between these, what we're going to do is double click on text and it allows you to place an event command above the one you've double clicked on. So we're going to go over to page 2 and show balloon icon. And above the player, we're just going to show the little frustration icon. We're going to click wait for completion. And now what's going to happen is once we've loaded into this map, he's going to say his text, she'll have a balloon animation above her head, and then she'll say her text. Then we'll make him move. So double click and set movement route and make sure you're clicking the right person to move. So we're going to be clicking Megus. He's going to move down and turn right. And then we'll just get him to say, man, you sure are keen to kill this vampire. And then a fun thing we can do is we can make her jump on the spot. So we're going to hit set movement route. This time it'll be on the player. We're gonna hit the jump. And we're not gonna offset by X or Y because she's just gonna jump on the spot. Then we'll show another balloon animation. This time it will be the anger one. Yeah, well you seem too relaxed about everything. Then we're going to make him turn the other direction. So he will turn left, make sure Magus is the one turning left. We'll show a balloon animation over his head and his will just be the sweat icon. Okay, no more lollygagging I guess. Let's get going. Then we'll hit okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have them both walk at the same time. So we're going to go over to set movement route we're going to have Magus move first, and he's going to move. As you can see, he's down here at the moment in the cutscene. We're going to have him go left, 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 up, left, left. And right here where it says wait for completion, we're just going to untick that. Now we're going to set a movement route for Ashula. So make sure this is player, untick wait for completion, and she's going to move left, 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 up, left, 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 left. Now it doesn't really matter where they're moving to at the moment, but what you can do is preview where the movement's taking place. But what we're going to do is after this movement starts, because we're not waiting for the movement to complete before the event takes on the next action, we're going to double click in here and we're just going to wait for two seconds, which is 120 frames, and then we're going to fade the screen out. Then what we'll do is transfer the player 
we're going to transfer her to the town we've created and she's going to be facing up and then we're going to fade the screen in. Now really quickly before we move on we want this intro to have some music so at the very start we're just going to double click and find a good fitting background sound. Okay once we have a good background sound we're just going to hit apply. So we'll hit play and test that out. Three years have passed since the calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come together in their final respite, Haven Island, the last surviving place on Gaia. Most people are happy with this and strive for a better tomorrow, but some people just want to watch the world burn. We're almost there, just a little further. Uh, we've been walking for hours, I just want to kill some monsters. Man, you sure are keen to kill this vampire. Yeah, well you seem too relaxed about everything. Okay, no more lollygagging I guess. Let's get going. And then it transfers us to the town and we can start moving around. We're just going to have one more little bit of a cutscene before we finalize it. Now one error I did notice in the event is this sweat icon after she yells at him. That's appearing on top of the player. We wanted that to appear on top of Magus, so we'll just change that. Hit apply. Now in the town, we've had her appearing here, so we're just going to have him appear here. So we'll load up his character, and he'll just be the cutscene for this event, so we'll go auto run. We're finally here. Let's say we hit the beach for a swim. And because they're appearing from the bottom of the map, what we want to do is have the text box appear from above them. So here where it says windowed and bottom, we're just going to have that coming from the top. How about we hit up the locals for info on this vampire instead? And again, we'll change this to top. Magus is just going to turn around and look at her. So this event is going to move to the right and then turn down. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Now what we're going to do is have him disappear into the player. So to do that, what we're going to do is set movement route for this event, which is Magus. We're going to turn through on. We're going to make him move down. We're going to turn transparent on. We're going to wait for completion. Then we're just going to wait 30 frames and then show a text box in the middle of the screen. Use the arrow keys to move around and spacebar to interact with the world. Then we're just going to hit OK. The last thing we need to do here is double click down here and where it says control self switch, we want to click on that. We want to turn control self switch A on. Then we want to create a new event page and over here where it says conditions we just want to make control self switch A on. And what this is doing is that means every time the player re-enters this map they're not going to be faced with the cutscene. So let's see how it all comes together. We'll hit apply and we'll test this out. Just quickly, if you guys are enjoying these tutorials then scroll down and hit the like button. It really helps get my video out to more people and enjoy. Three years have passed since the Calamity. All of the races of Gaia have come together in their final respite, Haven Island, the last surviving place on Gaia. Most people are happy with this and strive for a better tomorrow, but some people just want to watch the world burn. We're almost there, just a little further. We've been walking for hours, I just want to kill some monsters. <laughs> Man, you sure are keen to kill this vampire. Mm. Yeah, well you seem too relaxed about everything. Mm. Okay, no more lollygagging I guess. Let's get going. We're finally here. Let's say we hit the beach for a swim. How about we hit up the locals for info on this vampire instead? Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Use the arrow keys to move around and spacebar to interact with the world. And now you can see that's our opening cutscene and we can interact with everything else we've done in the game. Got a little cat over here, got a little crab McCrab. The crabs are attacking! In the next tutorial we're going to be going over how to create a quest we're going to do this using conditional branches and variables. So stick around for that one, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.